Hello, this is Brother Cromer from the Math Department at BYU-Idaho, and this is a continuation of the lesson dealing with describing bivariate data, scatter plots, correlation, and covariance. We already talked about scatter plots and correlation, but now we'll talk about co covariance. Okay? So covariance, the formula for a covariance is taking our correlation coefficient times our standard deviation for our x variable times the standard deviation for our y variable. Now here's an example of, of two examples of SPSS output that you can get the standard deviations as well as the correlation. And then what you, what you can do from there is, uh, is solve to get your, your covariance. Now for Excel, you can actually calculate the covariance using a function in Excel to calculate it for you, which your instructor or TAs can show you. But to get the uh, to get the covariance here, for instance, with the manatee data and powerboat registrations, what we can do is we can take the correlation coefficient, which is 0.952, times 176.747, which is the standard deviation for the powerboat registrations um, in Florida, and then 24.157. I rounded it here um, to 24.16. That's the standard deviation for manatee killed. And we multiply all three of those numbers together to get 4,064.73. We can also do the same thing with the mileage and price data that I showed you earlier, where if we have a core, uh, an R, or a correlation coefficient, negative 0.868, and our standard deviation for mileage is 31,111.808, and for price is 2,917.534, then we can take the, each of these three numbers, multiply them all together, to get our covariance, which is negative 78,780, or 70, excuse me, negative 78,788,149.63. Now, the one thing to stick out, the one thing to mention about covariance is that you're going to have the same, um, it's either going to be negative or positive based off of the correlation. If the correlation is negative, the covariance will also be negative, okay? If it's positive, like it is over here, then the, co then the covariance will also be positive as well. Okay, so now the effects of outliers. This is uh, I'll give you three examples in terms of how outliers can affect your relationship. So say for instance you have a data that falls, it seems to be falling close to a straight line here. Okay, and it seems to be positive. But if you have an outlier way over here, that'll greatly influence, especially if a, a small data set, which is what we have here. That's going to greatly influence your R, and so it's going to f it'll look like it here. If you calculate R, you'll get negative 0.037. But it's not really a negative relationship. It's due to this outlier. So if we pulled that outlier out, we could ha we we could not we could we will have a relationship that's positive and and potentially something that's that's uh, that's fairly strong. Same thing over here with the second um, graph here. We may have a negative. It may look like here with most of this data fairly close to the line. It's negative, but if we have an outlier here over to the far left, we could have a positive correlation, even though most of the data appear to be negative. Okay. Third example here is that we may have something that looks like that there's no relationship. It may just be this one big blob of information here. It doesn't seem to form a line. But if we have a point that's way up here, then if we try to fit a line, it could be, it, it'll look like it's a positive relationship, when in fact it may be just the effect of the outlier. So in, the short story is, uh, the sum of the story is, the, the, the sum up is, is that to be mindful of those outliers because they could greatly influence your, your relationship or your R or your correlation coefficient. So just be mindful of those. You may want to pull these out with each of these just to see how much it affects your relationship. Okay, or look, or affects your R. Now, one more thing is nonlinear relationships. Okay, now I just wanted to show you a few examples of some nonlinear relationships. This course is focusing on linear relationships between x and y, but uh, but down the road, if you decide to go further with stats, you might see some other relationships. For instance, you might see something that looks like this over here on the top right. That looks to be more of a what's called a cubic relationship. Here, over here, you could have a relation. It looks like a Looks like a, a sine wave here, but this looks to this is definitely not linear. Um, but uh, but this is another example of a of a, a shape that's nonlinear. We could have something that looks like this or this down here. Th it could either be quadratic. This looks to be quadratic. This might be quadratic or it might be exponential here. But anyways, uh, the point is is that um, we can have other different r um, relationships. 
other than a linear relationship. Now notice here with both of these on the right, we have a very fairly good R, which is 0.86 over here and 0.74 over here. But just because R is high or close to 1 or negative 1 doesn't necessarily mean it is a linear relationship. You have to take a look at the graph as well, or the scatter plot, just to check to make sure that we have a linear relationship. And that concludes my videos dealing with describing bivariate data and scatter plots and correlation, correlation and covariance. If you have any questions, please speak to your instructor or to one of your TAs.